Hello everybody, I hope you're doing well today. I want to share with you the most important message that you will ever hear in your life. That message is the gospel, or good news. But first, we need to understand the bad news. First, God is the creator of all things. For in the beginning, He created the heaven and the earth. He made man in his own image, both male and female, to have an intimate relationship with him. Unfortunately, the bad news is that we have sinned against God. You get one now. When Adam sinned against God in the Garden of Eden, we bore the sin nature through Adam's lineage, and therefore are sinners in the eyes of a righteous and holy God. As a result, sin became a barrier between us and God, for God cannot allow sin in His presence in heaven. God must punish those who bear the guilt of sin and face God's just and everlasting punishment, for the wages of sin is death. Hmm? In futility, we have sought to find a way to reach heaven by good works, being religious, or turning a new leaf, thinking that if we do enough good deeds, then God will accept us. To God, our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, for we are unclean. Our sin problem remains, and the payment for sin is not by good works, but it is by death. To go to heaven, we must be perfect without sin, but none of us are perfect. Hence, all of us are disqualified. Then there is no way we can get to heaven. Is there hope for us? Yes, there is hope. And that hope lies in the good news. As it is written, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Jesus Christ, both fully God and man without sin, came into the world to die for our sins on the cross by the shedding of His blood. Jesus did not have any sins to pay for, so God took all the sins of the world, past, present, and future, and imputed, or placed, them onto Christ. God's wrath was poured upon Jesus, who died in our place. Christ's death was paid in full for our sins by the shedding of His blood, leaving us nothing to pay for, thereby satisfying God's anger and justice. Then Jesus was buried, and three days later came back from the dead. After being with his disciples several days in his resurrected body, he ascended to heaven and is now seated on the right hand of the Father. This is the true love of God displayed toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus did all the work necessary to save man from his sins. Now he offers to us eternal life as a gift, as it is written, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast.
His gift of eternal life is free without cost or obligation. As it is written, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. However, the moment you offer something in exchange for it, it is no longer a gift. It becomes a debt. Then, what must we do to be saved? The Bible says that we are to repent, meaning change of mind, of unbelief, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ alone as your Savior. It is to trust Him as your only means of going to heaven. It is to believe that Christ died for your sins, that He paid it all, past, present, and future, once and for all for you, by the power of the blood, and was buried and rose again from the dead. That there is no other way of going to heaven except through Jesus Christ. To be clear, the word repent is not being sorry for your sins, turning from your sins, or reforming your life. The willingness to turn your life over to God so that He can direct your path. Repentance has absolutely nothing to do with regretting your sins or promising to turn from them, for God is willing to save you just the way you are. Once you place your trust in Christ alone for your salvation, then you become born again in the Spirit and you now have everlasting life. God saves you instantly the very moment you trust Christ as your Savior. Now you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Christ's righteousness has been imputed, placed on us. If He gives you eternal life, how long does it last? Forever. If it lasts forever and all your sins are paid in full, where will you go when you die? To heaven. You have no sins to pay for since Christ paid it all for you. Therefore, you cannot lose your salvation. You become a child of God. Yippee. As it is written, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, Jesus, hath everlasting life. You can know and be assured that you have eternal life. On an important side note, the only evidence that one is saved and is a born-again Christian is based on the finished work of Jesus Christ alone, not on us in any way, shape, or form, whether it be faith and works, faith that must be followed by works, faith that works, or faith that will produce work. It is only the promises of God on the fact that one is saved by God's grace through faith and not based on the evidence in ourselves, whether it be a changed life or displaying fruits, works, obedience, to prove that one is really a Christian. Furthermore, saying a sinner's prayer, asking God to save you, and confessing with your mouth, and trusting on these things to be saved from hell and go to heaven is adding to the gospel. Now is the day of salvation. Please do not put off this opportunity to be saved, for we do not know when we will leave this world. We are not even guaranteed another day, not even this hour. If you have not believed the gospel, I encourage you to please repent, meaning change your mind of unbelief and believe the gospel. For those who do not place their trust on Jesus Christ are already condemned by God. Trust Jesus Christ alone as your Savior. Trust in the blood atonement plus nothing else to save you from God's wrath. For those who have placed their trust in Christ Jesus alone as their Savior, please keep watching. Now that you are a Christian saved by God's grace through faith in Christ Jesus alone, I encourage you to grow in faith in your walk with God as you begin a special and intimate relationship with God and with the brothers and sisters in Christ. God has a plan for your life to grow in His grace.
It is important to understand that you have two natures, the flesh nature and the spirit nature. You do have free will to live after the flesh, to live in sin, but God desires that you live after the spirit which is pleasing to him for what God has done for you in love. Equip yourself with the whole armor of God as our war is not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual wickedness in the spiritual realm. Live for God so that others may see your good works and glorify God in heaven. Also, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and dust those corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust those corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Build your rewards in heaven that will last forever, and not on the earthly and temporary rewards on earth. First, read the Word of God, which is your spiritual sword, the Bible, the King James Bible. I recommend you start with reading the book of Galatians, the book of John, and the book of Romans. These will help with building your understanding of the gospel so that you won't be tossed to and fro by other teachings of the gospel, which is not another gospel, but are false or counterfeits that cannot save. Second, talk to God in prayer. Next, find a congregation to gather, grow, and fellowship with who hold to the true gospel according to the word of God. If a congregation does not teach the true gospel, then look somewhere else. If you cannot find a place, then I recommend the links to believers in Christ who hold to the true gospel in the description. Also, when given the opportunity, you should get water baptized as a testimony of your faith in Christ for others to see and rejoice with you. Lastly, share the gospel to others around you. The gospel that you received May you give to others the only true hope in this fallen world. As Jesus commanded, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature.